Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of this, the holiest week of the church year. The week we celebrate Christ's passion, death, and resurrection for us and for our salvation. Today, as Christ comes to us, we mingle our songs and our shouts of praise with those of the first pilgrims who welcomed our coming King. Hosanna, we cry. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But who is King Jesus, anyway? What kind of king is he? And what has he come to do? We look at him and we see a strange king, no doubt, a lowly king. Lowly he rides, humble, mounted on a donkey. What sort of king comes like this? But Jesus isn't like any other king. Jesus hasn't come to conquer any nations, to ascend any golden throne, to live and reign as the mighty ruler of some spectacular earthly kingdom. Jesus, this humble, peculiar king, comes to die. Jesus hasn't come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. This is who he is the Father's humble servant, on a mission. And that mission is to die. So lowly he comes, obedient he comes, humble he comes, with his face set toward the cross, our servant king, trusting that his Father will deliver him from his foe. So who is Jesus? He is the Father's servant come to do his will. He's headed to the cross, and now there is no looking back. In the Old Testament, we hear the willing voice of the Father's servant speaking. The Old Testament prophecy phrased in the past tense is for us now present in the person of Jesus. He tells us who he is, that he is God's servant, a disciple, a learner, with the tongue of those who are taught, with the ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord has opened his ear. And he is the willing disciple, for God helps him, and he trusts his help. He knows that he will not be put to shame. In verse 7, he says, The Lord God helps me. I know that I shall not be put to shame. And he tells us why he comes. He comes to preach. That is, to sustain with the word him who is weary to comfort sinners with the good news of salvation. And he comes to stand up against his adversaries in a great controversy. And he will suffer abuse. He will give his back to those who strike, his cheek to those who pull out the beard. He hides not his face from disgrace and spitting. Yes, they will beat him, they will shame him, they will spit upon him, they will kill him. And why does he do it? For all of this, he dies. And that is, in fact, why he has come. The Old Testament also tells us that Christ is faithful. He submits to suffering in willing obedience to God. 
Verse 5, he says, I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. He submits to the perfect will of God who will vindicate him. He who vindicates me is near. And therefore, he is resolute. He has set his face like flint. It will not be turned. It will not be changed. Golgotha is where he goes. But he goes willingly. And indeed, he goes with confidence that in this great contest, he will be victorious. Who will contend with me? He welcomes the opponent. Let us stand together then before the judge. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. He will never, never look back. But for today, we see this servant on Palm Sunday. We see who he is, lowly, riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And yet, and yet this humble man is Israel's king, the Christ, the son of David. For the people knew this even. They confessed it. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the king of Israel. But even more than this, he is the son of God. Paul says he is the one who left his father's throne and emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And we see why he has come. He has come to preach. For three years, Jesus is busy fulfilling this purpose of his ministry. And even this is foretold in Isaiah in chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You might recall that this, this is what Jesus sought in the scrolls when he preached in the synagogue at Nazareth. And after reading this passage, he says, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And he comes to preach, and he comes to die. And where is he headed? He is headed to his trial, the passion, his suffering, and his death. As he told the disciples, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. He knew fully well what he was doing. And we see, we see that he is faithful. His humble steed is plodding ever forward as God's servant submits himself to the road that leads to Calvary, and as the perfect man of perfect faith and obedience to God, his face is set like flint. He is never turning back. He tells us in Isaiah, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. And therefore, we believe. We believe in the servant who died for us on Good Friday. We believe who he is, and there he is before us, mocked, flogged, spit upon, beaten, crucified. And we realize by faith that this bloodied one 
is God's servant. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. We hear him praying in the garden, Thy will be done. We hear his voice cry out on the cross, even though forsaken, My God, my God. And yes, Jesus obeys the Father's will and accepts the horrible suffering. He accepts it as the perfect, trusting, faithful, obedient servant of God. And so we trust why he comes. hymn writer Paul Gerhard in our hymn of the day imagines a conversation between the father and the son in heaven go forth my son the father said and free my children from their dread of guilt and condemnation and the reply yes yes father most willingly I'll bear what you command me So then why has the servant come? He has come to die. He came to suffer condemnation that we deserved for our sin. As the lamb who takes away the sin of the world, he takes away our sin. And he has come to make us righteous. Through faith in his sacrifice for us, we are justified. And we have heaven. And he has come to rise. On Easter, Jesus is vindicated as our Lord of life, just as he trusted the Father would do. And this is the assurance that we who are in him have by our baptism. And we also will be vindicated and raised again to life. As we confess in the small catechism, in our explanation of the third article of the Creed. On the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And so on Palm Sunday, we raise our voices in praise to the Father's obedient servant going to the cross to fulfill the Father's will and to give his life for our salvation. We cry, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's no backing down for him. Hosanna indeed. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.